And today, our topic is really interesting. We have a lot of people um, questioning about that because we tell people that, oh, don't file taxes right away. Wait, wait, wait. Then they will say, well, why, Ying? Why do we need to wait? So here is why, and I want to explain that to you. So now let's, um, let's stop sharing this screen and I will share you a different screen, which we're gonna go through why I should file 1040 late this year, okay? We all know what is 1040, right folks? And don't tell me you don't know 1040. Of course you do. Your tax preparer knows. And that is a tax return we submit to IRS every year. And this 1040, do you realize that? It is always on cash method and is always from January to December. There is no such a thing about 1040 uh, start in July ends in June, like some of those companies, right? So 1040, IRS delayed the first day of accepting tax return, right? It used to be January the 15th. They delayed it till February the 12th. The reason for delay, and as IRS stated, on December 27th, remember, President Trump signed the, the bill to approve for, uh, the bill was sitting there for a month, but finally got approved. So there's a $600 per taxpayer coming out as a part of pandemic a stimulus check. We already see the 1200, so this 600 is coming in on December 27th. So most of the people already receive it. If, you're, if you filed your taxes electronically in, 2019, you know, in 2020 for 2019 taxes, and if you have a direct deposit information on your tax return, you already got that money. So IRS needing to change their tax return to address this particular credit because what happened is there are people didn't get it. So when they didn't get that 600 or they didn't even get that 1200 and there is area on the tax return and you can fill in that you got zero and then you can get those money at that time. So it is one more step for every taxpayer on, um, under IRS watch to receive this money. So that's why they're saying that we just didn't have the system ready for everybody to start using the forms. So they need more time. That's why they delayed to February the 12th. And IRS also cannot issue refund and involving earned income tax credit and additional child tax credit before mid February. And this is not new. This before mid February, before mid February, they cannot give you money because they are trying to prevent um, fraud. And IRS passed the law, the, the thing called PATH Act, Protecting Americans from Tax Hikes Act. So this one was started in 2015. So if you remember, I think in 2016, that was the first tax season, you don't get refund until mid-February. So same thing, and they are delaying accepting taxes because they can't give you a refund anyway. And the early filers are always, in most of the cases, are the people who actually have a big, huge refund they're waiting. And so I always know that you're not gonna get it by mid-February, so they delayed it to February the 12th. You probably want to know that if they delayed the starting time, aren't they gonna delay the closing time? We do not know yet. As tax professional, I actually don't have any opinion because if they delay it, I guess I'm fine because we got more time to prepare returns. But if they don't delay it, we got busy, but we get things done. So we have what we call the non-tax season. Unlike 2020, it is the whole year tax season. And we dragged on and dragged on and from July 15 to September to October, then to December 15 because of that tornadoes we got, right? So our whole year was tax season, not cool. No, not cool because, um, you know, it, it, it drains um, our energy. So this year, we'll see how this year goes. So with that, IRS delayed folks, so don't rush. Don't rush into 
community peace office or anybody's office right now and really just do some homework and I will continue tell you what homework you need to do, right? Because I am here telling you that not to file your taxes early. I want you to file it late, but not late to get penalty and late strategically. All right, so to get your tax refund fast, I want to just follow up on my first slide because once February the 12th is open, those uh, VITA program will start filing a lot of taxes with EITC credit, child tax credit, all of these recovery credit, that 12,000, that the 1,200 plus 600, those are all gonna come in, right? You want to get your refund fast. And number one, you need to file your taxes electronically. Don't ever think to fill up the form, forget it. That is so outdated. And it is almost like you don't ride bicycle anymore um, for long distance, you drive a car, right? So e-filing is just like normal things. You e-file your return and with direct deposit. You should never have your direct deposit account number, bank number that belong to somebody else. Just keep in mind, you do not put somebody else's bank account number and a uh, routing number on your tax return, folks, because that goes to that person when you receive money from the government. Nine out of 10 taxpayers will receive the refund within 21 days after electronically file their return. Okay, 21 days, folks. So once you finish the tax filing, you sign the e-file, 8879, and you say, when do I get my tax refund? That's what IRS said within 21 days. And the, oh, see that first, I spelled it wrong. And the first week of March refund for, um, <laughs> for many EITC and ACTC will be sent out. You can tell that when I type, I was doing something else. So um, yeah, it just rate my English to the elementary level is okay because I really probably deserve that because look at what I wrote in this sentence. But this is what to say is the first week of March, that's where, where you receive the EITC credit and the CTC credit, okay? So refund, make sure you file electronically, make sure it's a direct deposit. That direct deposit number should be yours, nobody else. And tips to make 1040 filing easy. So filing electronically and putting in direct deposit is the most recommended way to do your taxes. That's on IRS website being the number one thing. So if you call IRS goes, how do I make my life easy filing 1040? They give you two answers, electronic filing, direct deposit. So that is what that is. So it's really important. And you also know that you could go on IRS website to look for the payment status, right? And so I, you know, I will go back to the website to show you later. And so you can literally see where you are. You can check your refund and you can also make sure that uh, whether what's your um, recovery rebate credit, which is the 1200 plus the 600 and what they, where they are, you can check on that too. This is all on IRS website and the tax preparation software, okay? And those are the, the software you buy. If you do it yourself and you buy, it's includes in there. So you can literally just rely on that and file. I know, I don't know, um, uh, I don't know, I don't know the number accurately, but I know if you buy a 1040 software, it allow you to e-file more than one. So obviously you can use that. And making sure that the 1200, the 600 you receive on the stimulus payment, that doesn't go into your tax return, okay? You don't report income on that. It is a grandma, I always call. I call this type of money our grandma's money. And grandma just give you that and in the mason jar and you keep it. It is not taxable, okay? Grandma's mason jar money is never taxable. You know, if that is becoming taxable, there will make so many grandchildren sad. 
And uh, so no way, it will not be taxable. So you make sure that you classify that as a grandma mason jar money. And also another thing is belongs to grandma mason jar money. It is the PPP one, the one you got forgiven. That is grandma mason jar money as well. So not taxable, period. Okay, why delay 1040? And we want to delay 1040. Let me tell you why. Number one, if you file 1040 with Schedule C for 2020, and you would want to consider your PPP2 application impact on your return before you file. So I had a taxpayer and already applied for PPP2, actually already got it. So on the PPP2 application, and he reported 120,000 um, sales on Schedule C, and which is 25% of less than what he got last year. And the last year, he also got a lot of uh, more than 100,000 sales. And so his profit was zero because you know it just didn't really make money. But in 2020, when he applied for PVP and he reported 25% of sales loss, perfect. So he's eligible. And then he's calculating monthly average income. So he looked at his 120,000. He said, well, my monthly uh, income, my monthly salary, um, you know, self-employed earning is 10,000 a month. So times two, so he got 25,000 on the PVP too. And now you are filing 1040. That means you need to report that 120,000 as profit. So you have your sales minus nothing because your line 31 need to be 120. That's how you did your PVP too. So I am giving you this example so you can relate what you did with SBA, how that related to IRS. Folks, the IRS or SBA, I promise you they will come back to do compliance review on small businesses. That's guaranteed. That's what they call the low hanging fruit. They know that there are mistakes out there and uh, there may be even fraudulent activity out there they knew. And then they come in to audit you and they look at what you do and you think they're not gonna compare your tax return with what you applied for PPP2? Of course they will. Then what can happen if that is the case? Let's say you decided to write down your profit to zero again. That means you have no monthly salary. So your $25,000 PPP2 suddenly what? It is not forgivable. So you need to send that money back eventually. Of course, it's a loan. It's 2%, really low rate. So uh, I guess it's still good, but it's just not forgivable. It's not free money. Okay, so that's why I want you to delay 1040 and you really need to reconcile PPP2 with your 1040. And that is just to say in one scenario, if you file Schedule C. If you never file 1040 Schedule C, but receive the 1099 NEC, non-employment compensation in 2021. And I should correct that 2021 to um, 1099 NEC of 2020, but in 2021, right? So that NEC is actually your income for 1040. And again, you are eligible for PVP2 application because of that, but you want to really understand what is the profit you are going to claim because that profit is meant for, is your, is your salary, is your pay. So if your profit is 120,000, that means each month you're getting $10,000 salary. But if your profit is zero, that means you got zero salary for that business. Even though the business qualifies for PPP2, but you had no salary, then you don't have PPP2. Zero times 2.5 is zero. Yeah, I have a really great story over this. My, my older daughter was seventh grade. She was doing math class and it came home, was doing something like this. Zero times something equals to one. 
So I said, boo, that's wrong. Then my daughter said, ah, that is, um, that is American math, mom. You are Chinese. You don't even know math. And uh, it's Chinese math that way, American math this way. So I just couldn't help to laugh how the math can be different. Just like this virus is Chinese and this virus is American. It just is funny, right? It's funny. And so this, it is what you need to do. You need to calculate that, making sure you know that if you apply PPP2 on 1099 NEC, then you want to reconcile it. So another reason to delay 1040, right? If you are still trying to sort out why you are not getting stimulus checks, file your return later until you know for sure why. If you don't know why, I'm afraid because there is a big mistake going on in the system. A lot of people's uh, stimulus check went to some large corporation who makes the tax software. Don't know how that happened. So it went to the large corporation. So maybe your refund check is there. If you did it on your own using that software, maybe your money is with somebody else. And then if you go in to claim that again, it will be wrong. So don't try to trigger audit for yourself and I really understand why you don't get it. Maybe you didn't get it because you didn't file taxes or what. So before you, before you get it clear on that, don't file your 1040 2020 yet. Wait until you know the answer, okay? You should know the answer, all right? So why delay? So there's three reasons. Why delay? If you close your business in, in 2020, and you want to finish up your business balance sheet first before you file 1040. So you might say that, oh, Ying, I don't really think so. And my business is always separated from my 1040 and it's a C-Corp. I never really do anything with that. They do what they are doing. And I just take a W-2 coming to my 1040, I file. My life is simple. No, not so simple if you closed your business in 2020 because I want to introduce to you this section 1244 of tax code, because you need to know that it will bring huge benefit to you, okay? So if you close your business in 2020 and you want to know that what is your real loss. So let's just simply read this 1244. It says that allow the losses from the sale of shares of small domestic corporations to be deducted as ordinary loss. What does that mean? If it is a capital loss, hey folks, do you remember capital loss? You only can deduct 3,000 a year. Do you remember? You do, right? So you know that. So if you have a capital loss, it, it gives you a right to deduct but $3,000 each year. If you got a million dollar loss, I'm sorry, you're gonna be like, you have to live up to 300 years to get it done, okay? Of course. There's other ways to offset it faster, but um, let's not go there because it will take another hour of my time to do that. But what I'm trying to tell you that, let's say if I have a small restaurant and it was a C Corp and I couldn't afford landlord rent, I closed it. I closed it, sale. What do you mean by sale? I didn't sell. I just closed it because nobody buy it. I sold for zero. There you go. So your share is zero. But you, your restaurant worth something. You have equity number in there, say 50,000. And then you sold it for zero to nobody. You, you lost it, right? So that 50,000 would come back to 1040, reduce your 50,000 salary. That is what we call the ordinary loss. Ordinary loss can offset ordinary income. Ordinary income are earned income just like W-2 income. Ordinary income are interest income. So whatever on your tax form, and that would be, uh, that would be deductible. So uh, while we are seeing this one, and uh, you know, later I go back to the uh, internet, I want to show you our President Biden's income tax return. And I want to show you that tax return. So we go through the line item and we'll recap everything we said right here. So you understand why we want to file our 1040 late. Not late to pay taxes, to pay penalty. I mean late strategically, okay? So 
now you understand, right? Why I say that if you close your company in 2020, hey folks, you need to calculate your equity number and then calculate your loss. And there you go. And if you had $150,000 W2, but you had a $100,000 1244 loss, then you only pay taxes on the 50 folks. You probably even qualify for earned income tax credit and the child tax credit, um, whole slew of credit. So that's, yeah, that's really good. So if you start a business, that's another reason for you to delay. If you started business and to make decision on what kind of tax structure you want your business to be first before you file 1040. So you probably say, well, what do you mean? Ying? When I start a business, I already registered myself as a single member LLC. And now I 2020 is already behind me. And are you telling me that I can change it? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. And you can change it because they are IRS rules allow small businesses to go back to fix their tax structures if they have a valid reason. And you don't know to file it or you file it, they never received it. Or you just didn't even know that this is the kind of structure you wanted, you misunderstood it. And all, all kind of reasonable clauses can allow you to go back to fix it. So single member LLC, and if you made too much profit in 2020, and you want to, you ended up filling up your return, you go, ooh, you know, I claimed the PPP too, and now I have $120,000 profit. Hmm. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to do taxes, I'm, I have to pay 15% self-employment tax and the income tax on 120,000, that's about 20%. So here it goes, you have $38,000 taxes to pay, okay? So with that, you want to make sure that you really consider the alternatives. And of course, um, whatever you have done already and that become, can become a roadblock for you to accomplish the next, but at least to get the best result for yourself. So single member LLC, and if you come over and uh, uh, with no other restrictions, if we know that you've, you know, you've made a lot of money and we know that your spouse is actually the, the unspoken heroes in your business, without him or without her, and you can't even do your business, even though you registered it for yourself, but your spouse is actually part of it, then so naturally you should file partnership return. And that would reduce some of the taxes when you do. So yes, delay 1040, get consultation service going first before you do that. Escort, if you did not run payroll in 2020, which prevent you from applying for PVV2, if you are S corporation and consider, consider what you have taken from the company. Is that really a capital return, capital draw, or that is actually payroll you pay to yourself? Maybe, honestly speaking, maybe you just didn't want to pay payroll taxes, but actually it's your payroll. Then there is remedy to it. So you can fix it. And you can go forward with that payroll properly stated so you can apply for PV2, okay? Again, that would impact your 1040 and just make sure that, yes, you have another reason to delay because you have a complications right here. And maybe the S corporation status is just really not working for you. And then there are chances for you to go back to C Corp. And so those are the reasons for you to delay because you want to make sure that you went away to C Corp before you file your 1040. Otherwise, what if you are not successful? You still have a K1 to file, right? So those are the reasons you should delay. 1040 need to be filed when all companies are filed. I don't care if your company is sole proprietor, single member LLC, multi-member LLC, S Corp, C Corp, even nonprofit. And when you finish those company filings, then you will know more clearly what you need to do. For example, if it is a nonprofit, if you are a board of director or executive director of the nonprofit, and non nonprofit taxes really need to be done because in the nonprofit taxes, that reflected how much 
you have. Maybe they're taxable income, maybe they're not. Maybe that's a donation you give to the, to the nonprofit and you just don't even remember. All of that will trigger you to change your 1040. So just be really understanding that there is no such a thing about other taxes is not related to you. They are all related. They are related. The more sophisticated your business is, the more relations you are establishing. And client has gone through divorce or other life-changing event should delay. Let me tell you, if you are in the process of divorce, you know, I, you know, I mentioned to folks that we have attorney company, attorneys are our clients and they're busy in 2020. And you know what, when I asked them, what are you, what you guys are busy with? And they, they, they would say that, you know, not to be surprised is the divorce rate is going up. You know, I figured locking yourself into a one room for too long and um, you file a divorce. So, you know, maybe that is what it is. Um, so I understand, but that divorce, that divorce should delay your filing because you don't even know whether you would file jointly together or marry file jointly and what is the agreement and you need to have that divorce decree come out before you know how to file your return, okay? So there goes a delay. And what about your rent? You bought a rental property. You just closed the deal at the end of the year. You're not ready to file 2020 yet because you want to know your real cost of the rental property, a cost segregation. That is a huge benefit for you to write off. And if you don't even know what I'm talking about, you really do to a tune up for tax knowledge because those are important things, okay? And getting married. And a spouse owe taxes. Oh yeah, fall in love with someone with a huge tax bill and that's okay. You know, relationship doesn't have to be built upon, you know, IRS notices. It's not like we see them higher when they step on a whole box of IRS notices. So we're just, we're neutral, okay? So you got married with someone with a lot of tax dues, don't file jointly, my dear because all of your refund gonna be taking away and filling up that box. So don't do it and a reason to delay and figure it out and figure out how to deal with that issue before you happily ever, happily, happily ever after? Is that the term? Okay, that's my Chinglish again. Okay, so that is a reason to delay. Child born in 2020, and we'll wait for social security number, another delay. Child, um, you know, coming with parents and a needing IT number, or you are waiting for new renewal of IT number. So those are all reasons to delay folks, okay? And why delay 1040 more? Borrowers that receive the PPP loan for, um, for more than 150,000, uh, Actually, this, this one is the slice. Uh, yeah, so that one, that one is related to PPP. Okay, so what happened is when you receive the forgiveness in your business and you want to make sure that your accountant had treated as a grandma's mason jar money first before you get the K-1 because it's possible that uh, the PPP reduced your payroll expense. So your accountant didn't understand what grandma's money is all about and helped you to reduce your payroll. Let's say you used $30,000 PPP money to do payroll and the payroll expense is $30,000 less. And to make sure that didn't happen to you and making sure you deduct that 30,000, even though you, you is paid by the government, but that's a grandma mason jar money, remember? So that 30,000 should never really even show up on your income statement. So make sure that is done before you go for your 1040 filing because your K-1 going to be wrong, okay? And so you want to make sure that you are not over-reporting income. Now, and um, last but not the least, why delay 1040? Delay 1040 is a very um, proven method to reduce tax audit. It's a proven method. 
I would not say that is written at the IRS website. No, I didn't really find anything related to that. But I can give you my 28 years practice experience. And I know my firm is just about 23 years old, uh, but I'm claiming 28 because I had a five years solo and that I know um, my experience should start from 28 years. So on these 28 years running with taxes folks, and it's proven when you file extension on your taxes and when you delay your filing, you dramatically delay the chances to be pulled out for audit. And you know, let me explain how exactly that works. So basically, IRS with technology, IRS is getting much more robust and more timely. And you notice that the tax notice, they don't come in to you like three years later anymore. They come in right after you file. And the CP2000 was literally coming out within six months time when you file. So things are going faster because they have a system to automatically match their data versus your data. So what is their data? For example, if you get a W-2, your employer sends something out to IRS to report W-3 on you with W-2 copy. So the IRS already have your W-2 information. So when you file your W-2, they match. This is why IRS do not want to give refund out before mid-February because they want to get the W-2 information from the employer by the end of January. So all of the employer in the country right now are in the hot heat to send out W-2s because the due date is the end of, uh, end of January, okay? So with that, you understand that they have a data and you are also submitting your data electronically. So the machine does its work and knows what is missing, what is coming. And when you, when you understand the IRS has numbers on you, and you also know that you're submitting things to match these number, the theory is very simple. You do data match, right? So with those data match process, we do inside of our CPA firm, and we, we knew the tax return we filed is accurate. I am not even talking about is correct. What, is, what does that mean correct? I mean, correct means nothing, it's very subjective. We say it's accurate because it is the same as what the IRS has for you. So the data match is accurate. So with that, I say that you should participate in these kind of activities you know, with our firm. I mean, Community CPA is the number one firm ever. In all the firm I know, nobody does it. And it is not easy because it's very time consuming. You know how long we stay on the phone to just take one data out, out of the IRS? We probably called five times before the IRS phones is not being cut off. So now I'm on 1-800 number committee. So I'll make sure that never happened again to my staff. But um, so the, the issue is that you really have to you really do have to spend time to get that. And that is why most of the service providers don't have that time. They don't have that manpower to do it. It's not like they don't know how to do it, right? So everybody knows how to do it, but putting in five hours, getting one data, and uh, you know that's just, that just the kind of work we do here. So what we, in, in our process, this is our process, I laid it out for you. So what we do is, we do tax estimate and the tax planning in the very beginning. Sometimes the year before, for example, we did November, De December last year. So January to come, January the 15th, all the estimated taxes are paid. Every client we know gonna owe taxes and we already told them to pay taxes. So we assume all of our clients will not pay taxes anymore because it's already paid. So that's our first step. And of course, that first step involves tax planning. We need to know how you are doing and we need to make sure that we calculate. So we have done all of that. So the second step, we draft the final tax return before the due date. So the due date, April 15, we draft it. We draft all the company return, we draft the personal return and we finish it. We give you the draft copy so you know exactly that draft matches to what we planned, right? The second, the second match, we match the draft with what we estimated. Then now we file extension. 
when we file extension, give us one more chance to make the payment, just in case when we did planning and you didn't tell us that you got a huge payment. Then when we do the draft, we found out, oh, there is a 1099 income that you got. So in that case, we got more taxes. So we'll have you pay when we file extension. So that's the second uh, safe, uh, safe place to make payment, right? We made payment before, we make payment now because the due date is here. After that, and we celebrate finishing and we wait for IRS system to get completed. So we will take the data from IRS, knowing that, oh, this is what IRS has for you. This is what we have for you. And we match both and we say your tax return is super. So then we will final filing your return. Then after we file your return, you should assume it will never come back. There's no CP2000, there's no notices because your return is not just right, it is accurate. So with that, and we finish the return. With that, we tell client that you really need to delay because we can't, we don't have the magic wand to know what IRS has for you until they close their system, until they're done. And they are not done when they are doing April 15 deadline. They are done in the summer. So that's when we go in and to pull out the data. Okay, I know you're gonna say that, well, if I file extension, and what if I owe more money? And what kind of things am I going to encounter? So of course, the last chance for you to make payment, so you are not going to be penalized is on April 15, 2021, if they don't move the tax deadline, right? So with that, and then the failure to file, failure to pay, failure to pay proper estimated tax are the three most common taxes. So if you want to understand this thing really simply, I would say that if you are the one didn't file, didn't file extension and delay taxes, and you also owe taxes, and you also owe taxes last year. So let's say all three problems you have in one shot, and then your penalty would be about 25% of your total tax due. Okay, but if it is just one of them or two of them you qualify, then reduces from there. So the maximum penalty you got is 25% of the taxes you have due. So then with that, that gives you a little bit of balance in terms of what to, what to do. So when you are working the tax return with our firm, you will never have failure to file because we file extension for you, right? And when you need an extension, when you need a data match, we need to file extension. So we do that so you don't have a failure to file. We'll make sure that you file your return before the extended due date. Failure to pay. Failure to pay happens when you don't pay taxes reported on your return in full by the due date April 15. An extension to file doesn't extend the time to pay. So by April 15, we have the draft come out and we just make you pay whatever the draft says you're supposed to pay. So that should be taken care of. You should never ever have failure to file, failure to pay penalty from our firm, from working with us, right? Failure to pay proper estimated tax that is something that people do do cost benefit analysis. And I will, sell, I will tell you that they are entrepreneurs, their cash flow is tight and they don't want to pay estimated tax. They just go ahead and pay the penalty on estimated tax, which is about 5% of the taxes that you owe. And back in, I want to say 2017, and the IRS actually uh, lowered the, the threshold to 80% instead of 90%. So the 80% the means that as long as you paid 80% of the amount due from prior year, you, you don't get this penalty, but it used to be 90%. So that, ha, that threshold dropped. So made a lot of people eligible to not having this penalty. So these are the penalty you're, you're considering, but overall, here today, what we're trying to relate it to you is the fact you don't have to rush your 1040 tax return for no good reason. If you have a good reason to, to get it going fast, of course, but if you don't, or just because you are anxious, so maybe that anxiety is not worth of taking a risk and you should follow the step that we have in our firm as the best practice. And we really consider ourselves um, doing great in terms of 
getting these uh, getting these taxes filed on time, and also getting those taxes filed accurately. Okay, and uh, now I want to share screen with you because I want to show you the uh, the things I pull out for um, with Biden's tax return. I want to show you how that works. Uh, let me go to share screen. Um, I'm going to use our president's tax return to show you um, what are the things deserves the delay. So that will give you a final um, overview of what I talked about. So here, this is our president's tax return for 2019. So if we just look at, uh, oh, can everybody see? I'm going to make it bigger. I think this is better, right? So I'm going to remove it. It looks good. Okay, so now you see, we have this first line is W2, uh, W2 wages salary, right? And then that wages salary, just like I told you, and the employer issues the W3 and the W2 send it to IRS. And here our president received the W2 and he needs to put that number on here and that number need to match to what uh, IRS has. If that number doesn't match, for example, sometimes the employer made a mistake, they reissue W2, but when they reissue W2 and you did not know and you still use the old W2, that could cause mismatch. So when we say to verify your data, and that is what we mean, we pull that out from IRS, we look at what you give us, we match. So that number one item right here deserves a match. Sometimes it happened to us that when we took the data out, boy, our taxpayer had so many W-2s and he did not report. So we, we pull him out and said, hey, you know, why do you have so many W-2s? You don't tell us. He goes, what do you mean? And oh, what I mean, you worked here, you worked there, and you did not know you worked there? He goes, no, I didn't work there. There, identity theft. Okay, so he gone into, his ID was stolen. His ID was stolen. People were working in Utah under his name. But if you don't, if you don't have the data from IRS, how would you know? You would never be able to file it, right? And what's going to happen to you is the data doesn't match and you're going to rain out for audit where you're going to get a CP2000 says that you have all these W2, why are you not filing? Then you will say, oh, you know, I never worked there. You write them, your refund already delayed for six months, right? Now, and tax exam interest, those are 1098. Those are the data coming out of the financial institution. And those data, sometimes they don't come to you on time, folks. So you really need to wait. And there's no need to file 1040 early than April 15. And so you want to make sure that you receive all the investment. Some of my seniors, they, uh, they really don't know because their money is everywhere. So they don't really know what kind of investment they have. So in that case, we absolutely take data from IRS. We don't go by theirs because they're not gonna give us all the document. So this is where a lot of seniors are needing to the 7,546 number right here. A lot of seniors needed help on that. So we need to get data out of a third party instead of waiting for our taxpayer to give us. 943, that's the same thing, IRA distribution. And in, in 2020, some of our folks uh, did not take the mandatory distribution. And I can tell that Joe did not, our president Joe did not take the mandatory distribution because uh, 2020 CARES Act allow them to not take it. So you can put the money in the stock market. It is already tanked in March. So hopefully it come back later. So there's more reason for people not to take that out. And he has very little. So I think that he didn't take it. And uh, of course, pension pension would come in uh, with, uh, with a 1099R. Those are tax documents. If you don't receive it, you probably don't even know to file it. And again, opportunity to misreporting, right? Social security benefit, same thing. And that is coming out of uh, SSA. And what if you didn't receive it? Then you don't know. 
Okay, so these are also data that you need to have. Then of course, there is a 228703 here is other income. This other income is coming from um, the businesses. So look, and it is S corporation partnership and the real estate return. And then this is the total K ones that our President Biden has. So in the back, it says who they are, but uh, you know, I am so, I am proud of individual who is willing to be so transparent. And I am looking at this tax return with a lot of respect, I'll just tell you. And so that, that number is what I told you. You need to finish your business tax return and you need to know and whether you accounted PPP dollar correctly before you go in to report income. Okay, so that's where the business, that's the business side of it I was talking about. Then of course, uh, this is an itemized deduction. So President Biden has a 944,000 AGI and taxes calculated, 287,000, but President Biden put in um, estimated taxes. So look at this. So he put in uh, $69,000 additional and to come up with the $299,000 taxes. So look at this. He has a self-employment taxes of 11,653. So some of these dollars, some of these dollars right here, this 228703, some of these are uh, 1065 subject to self-employment income. And do you, do you know that if you are one of those and you qualified for PPP2, so make sure that you look at your box 14A to know whether you're qualified for PP2 or PP2 or not, and don't lose that opportunity, okay? And so here, so he ended up getting a refund because he already paid all of the taxes. So now come back to here. And we talked about this one being the business and uh, we need to uh, make sure um, uh, you finish your business first. Then we also have this household employment taxes. So this just tells you that um, President Biden actually have a nanny or some sort of household employee that he employs. And our tax code giving Social Security Medicare credit back for household employee. So that's on Schedule H and that's what he did. And it's, um, uh, it's a credit. So that means reduces his taxes. Then see, this is estimated taxes he did. And then access social security, that just means that the, the W-2 he's getting is not getting it from one organization. He's getting it from several organizations. So those organizations, they all treat him as the only, w, uh, the only W-2 he has. So they withhold a lot more social security than what he actually really should be paying. Remember our social security, the top, uh, salary was 137,000, right? So he had 500 some thousand dollars in there. So that's why he's getting that portion back. It's all done, it's all done fairly, correctly. And I am looking at his return thinking that is a good character. And then look at that gift by cash and a check. That means that he had a donation of 14,700. And um, those are his investment. We were talking about the 7,546. And you think you're gonna gather all of those little items. And I mean, if you are, uh, you know, if you are at President Biden's age and you can hire a household employee to help you sort out your invoices, I'm afraid you need to be a candidate for me and to start doing a data match, okay? Uh, I'm not trying, I'm, I'm not here trying to say that you have to work with our firm and, um, you know, we're really good. So I don't know why you are not, but if you have other people you're in love with, that's okay, but make sure they all know what I am talking about. And so this is really the, the run over of uh, President Biden's tax return, which echo with what I was telling you, why we need to file 1040 late. So I hope that uh, really um, refreshing and make you feel like, oh, wow, I'm not the only person don't want to file taxes on time. Nope, 
you are the thinker. You are the one strategically decided, maybe not consciously, maybe subconsciously, strategically decided that's the right thing to do. Boy, you are so blessed. And I just think that uh, you know what you're doing. And if you have any question, contact Community CPA. We're here for you 24 seven. No, don't tell, don't tell any of my staff I said 24 seven because they will be like, what Ying, 24 seven? Do we have time to sleep? <laughs> of course you do. And I mean, just in spirit, right? In spirit. Okay, I'll talk to you. Bye-bye.